I wish for you a full client load so that you could just be leaning into the work that you love always. And yet, to get to that full client load, you know as well as I do that some marketing is required. And when I say for you to lean into the work that you love, I also hope and wish that the marketing part of your work is what you can also learn to love. Now, the reason why I think many of us don't love the marketing part of it is because we think we have to do some kind of, I often like to say, shenanigans uh, in order to get clients, do the kind of marketing that makes us feel conflicted within ourselves. There's a quote from Gandhi that uh, is, is always very powerful to read it, and especially from, from Gandhi. Um, he said, always aim at complete harmony of thought and word and deed. Always aim at purifying your thoughts and everything will be well. Why can't we apply that to marketing? Why is it that when you start to you know, do marketing, you feel like you have to do things that you wouldn't do to your friends? Okay. And so what I particularly want to apply all this to today is the fact that we create content, like we make you know, videos or write articles or make podcasts and and at the same time, we also try to sell our services or we know we have to let people know about our services and our programs. And the problem is this. Many of us think that those two things should be connected, that those two things should even be one effort. So you're you're trying to sell your services, your program. So you think you have to like create some content and then hide the selling part somewhere in your content so that it kind of stops the scroll. You stop people scrolling and then they read your wonderful story or your inspirational idea. And then, oh, by the way, you can also, they can also hire you as a, <laughs> as a coach or join your program or whatever, right? This is a disconnection between harm. This is not a harmony of thought and deed because what is the intention when you're creating content? Well, I hope there's a purity of intention of, I have something I feel is important to say, or I have something I believe is helpful for my audience, or I have a story that I really wish to share with the world because someone else might find it inspiring or beautiful. Um, I have some art that I created that I'm really proud of, or that I, I think will contribute to the world in some way. The content that's particularly free content I'm talking about is an act of generosity. Free content and also free content is an act of authentic expression. And therefore, it is an effort to grow yourself at the deepest level because you are lean, you are finding that authentic voice within you always so you're always looking and finding and and trying and experimenting and expressing that authentic voice within you and at the same time you're doing it with a heart of service may someone else find what i'm about to say useful uplifting um you know healing in some way that is content at its purest form that is harmony of thought and word and deed and yet, if you say, oh, but oh, I should also mention my one-to-one -one services because maybe someone will, will get interested and I got to somehow build that in so that it's not only about delighting them and connecting, but maybe they'll want to spend money with me and hire me and whatever. Immediately, you know how it feels. You immediately feel like, oh, I got to now get clever or I've got to get charming or I've got to get something for them to want to buy this thing. It, it pollutes, corrupts your content, generosity. And so this is why many of us look at content as a chore. Content creation is a chore because, oh, I got to 
I got to create content so that people will notice me and then they'll hire me and they'll join my stuff. They'll buy my things. It's a chore. And when you think of it that way, of course, I would think of it that way as a chore too. But no, I've told you many times on these videos and I'll remind you one more time. I come to content as an exercise of creativity fitness and as a offering of my energy to my audience, to you, in hopes that it may benefit in some way your life, your business, your, your mindset, your growth. Regardless, here's the key, regardless of whether you ever sign up for any of my things, let alone my email newsletter, whatever, whatever my email newsletter, my, my courses, my coaching, my, that is how content becomes truly authentic and generous and truly beneficial to your own personal growth because you're really diving deep and you're really sharing from the heart. So on the one hand, the content needs to be purely given, purely expressed and purely given as much as possible without a profit motive. Yeah, here, it's the strangest thing, right? Here's a business coach talking about doing stuff without profit motive. Is he crazy? What's going on here? Okay. And, but I'm not done. There are two wings to your authentic business activities. One is your content generosity and one is your authentic offerings. Without these two wings, it's completely off balance. It's not an authentic business. Maybe an authentic hobby on the one hand, or maybe a, you know, a purely profit-driven business that's not authentic, that's not from the heart, that's not, you know, deeply contributory to your your soul's growth, right? Like the the the, the, the integration, the synthesis of these two, is what we're after here. And so on the, again, the two wings you have to balance it. On the one hand, it's content generosity, and when you're being when you're creating content and you're sharing it, that's what you're focused on. The content generosity, purity. May this serve everybody who's who's watching this or reading this or, or listening to this, regardless of if they ever buy from me, regardless, really, like I want to serve. Now, I'm not saying you create content and random stuff. I mean, in the beginning of your content creation journey, you should experiment with many different topics, topics, but eventually you start to realize, okay, my business is, is basically about these things. And I create content in, in, in service to these things so that I can become better at that. I can become smarter, become more knowledgeable, become more uh, in depth at communicating these things. At the same time, it'll serve people from, from, from this, from this, area of expertise okay so content generosity is still focused on your area of expertise but you're not selling you're you're delighting you're inspiring you're you're creating context for them you're educating them you're healing them whatever it is you do in your content okay but on the other hand the other wing is authentic offers in other words selling is the other wing like like this is where some of you are off balance. Like some of you watching this, you know, like I said, some of you watching this are really conflicted because you think you're supposed to create content and hide some selling message in, in within it or whatever, or create content and end with, this is why you should hire me. I'm like, oh God, whenever I see those posts, I'm so, I'm like, that's just bait and switch is what it is. Like I, I thought I was reading this wonderful story or this wonderful thing. And then now you're trying to sell to me. Okay. Right. No. Content purity on the one hand. And then on the other hand, selling purity also. Like, why are you ashamed to sell your services? Like, let's be pure in both efforts. Sometimes we are pure in content and that's what we do. And then on other times when we're not posting content, we have to occasionally, consistently, and occasionally post our offers. And we are also pure and unashamed in selling. Why are you so ashamed of selling, honestly? That comment below, what, what's wrong with selling? What, what, is there something wrong with your services? No, you're, I hope you're proud of your services. I mean, if you're not proud of your services, that's one thing. But you're proud of your service. Your service heals people. It uplifts people. It transforms, it helps to positively transform the world, doesn't it? <laughs> I, I assuming you believe that. Because if you believe that, you should share that. When you're selling your service, you should be like, 
I love this. I love this work so much. You know, I'm not going to give you the words because if I give you the words, it's no longer authentic. It has to come from the heart. It has to come from whatever context right now you have about your work and your relationship to your audience. So please don't cop. You can copy my words. I don't care if you copy me, but you should care if you copy me because it won't be authentic to you. But essentially, the message is something around, adjacent to, related to, the fact that you you love your work so much, and you you are so eager and caring to support people, in support people, organizations, whoever you support, in transforming in the positive way that your work helps, and you just want to make sure people know about it. So when when I'm selling, notice what I do. Notice what I do every. Um, most Wednesdays, if you go to my Facebook business page, most Wednesdays, I that's my selling day. So now you know, if you want to study how I do it, okay, just this Facebook business page, look for my posts on Wednesdays. Not every Wednesday do I sell something because, but I would say at least two Wednesdays out of each month, I'm selling something on my Facebook business page and you go there and, and look at it. And it's, there's no... There's no story of, you know, you think you're reading a story, you think you're reading an article and suddenly I sell something. You, don't, you will never find that. My selling is very transparent and it's very like, I am excited about this thing coming up. If it excites you too, if it's the right fit for you, I hope you'll play with me. You come join me, whatever it is, sign up, um, ask me any questions. And then that's it. It's very, it's very, I, I, I try to be authentic, right? Like it's, it's, it's simple. And it's to the point, and it's to the for the for the people for whom it's right. If somebody is surfing social media, and they've been thinking about a particular problem in their life, or a particular yearning or desire in their life, and 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 especially if they have seen you before, they have a good feeling towards you, your brand, your you know your name, your business, or whatever, and they see you're offering something that they've been thinking about, that they've been trying to work on. Of course, they're going to keep reading. Of course, they're going to keep watching and go, oh, wait, this person whom I like is offering, I'm looking down at my phone. Here. This person whom I like is offering this thing I've been thinking about. It. I've been wanting to work on it. I've been curious about this thing. I've been wanting to learn more. I've been wanting to work on this part of myself or my company or my, my relationships or my health or whatever it is that you help people do. Let me check it out. That's, that's what my passion is, is to help you arrive at that harmony of thought, word, and deed, and to have purity in your actions so that when you are selling, there's no shame. There should never, why, why are you shamed of selling? Unless you're hiding something, just like how most mark, much of marketing, content marketing is. It's hiding a selling message underneath and within an article, like bottom end of an article or end of a video or something. It's like, stop it. <laughs> there's no need to do that. You're, whenever you're hiding, you, you can't be, authentic can't be a pure heart you can't be um genuinely caring from the heart because there's there's a corruption already versus when you're when you're giving content don't don't sell you don't have to sell you know i i'll you know and here the 80 20 rules is so simple but it's true 80 let 80 percent of your of your posts your social media posts particularly 80 percent of your social media posts be you know content generosity and then 20% of your social media posts be pure, authentic invitations, selling offers, where it's just to the right person. You don't have to yell. You don't have to persuade. You don't have to you know, try to be charming. You're being transparent. You just say, if someone's thinking about this, they've been needing to work on this, of course, they're going to take a look at this. So I hope this is helpful. This is how I approach my marketing. And this is how I'm still here after you know 14 years of doing this, whereas many of my peers are, are no longer here. Um, you know, they really, the people I started with 14 years ago, many of them are no longer doing their business. And I think one big part of it, underlying factor is there wasn't, there, there was always a conflict in their conscience. And so that's not a sustainable strategy for business or for marketing. It's like the more purity and the more authenticity and the, the more joy there is and the more longevity you have in, in, in what you're doing in your business and your marketing. So I hope this is helpful. Thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing your comments below.